You ever feel like maybe you just want to control time? No. There's no time at all. Let things fall. Hit a button. And maybe they just rewind. Well, blocking bullets. Slowing things down. I even adjust the goddamn audio. That's yep, freaking cool. This is involving a asset called Kronos, which is done by the same guy that does Bolt, uh, which is Unity's uh, visual scripting. Anyways, it's now free. Oh, it's been free for a couple of years now, I think. It's an older asset, so it's not being updated, but it's free. It still works. I got no problems with it. Thought I'd share that with you. So, <clears throat> this is just a little scene I have where we have... I have these spheres and they have effects on them and in order to to stop these things I put this thing called a timeline child on there and on there and this guy has a timeline and we're using a clock called enemies beyond that these guys all they do is just travel forward using velocity and one of them has an audio uh, playing in 3D sound. I didn't bother putting it on all of them, but on, on one of them. And my little fake little player here, who is a horrendous player, has got virtually nothing for logic. I can just more or less move him. But if I hit uh, spacebar, I create a little time zone. And as you see, I think it's that guy with the sound. Or it's that guy. Yes, do you, you hear that sound? Right, so I can adjust. Well, it, it, no, I guess not me. It's it adjusting the, the audio. So, but here is another particle effect and just a animated guy in looping. And if I, I can freeze his animation like it's nothing. Right. Uh, I can also do. Whoops. Oh. And my crazy shield. But I can also do the particle effects with them. Now here I got two groups of boxes. See a whole bunch of boxes, red and blue. And if you look at them, uh, they have a timeline. And this guy is looking at the blue clock. Whereas the red guy is looking at the red clock. So I can control those. I can say we can go backwards in time or forward in time. Now they're not doing anything. Uh, and I'll show you why, but first we'll look at this. So I can take the red boxes, I can speed them up so they fall. And they're just using their normal physics. And then I can take that and I can just say, you know what, let's go backwards. And they go back. Pretty cool. And I can do the blue ones separately. I can rewind those. Uh, I can do them both at the same time at different speeds. You know, and then maybe have this one going backwards and then forwards and this one's going backwards. You know, all sorts of crazy shit going on. But I could have them, say, both going backwards. Let's rewind them all. Right, they're falling. And then I can use my global one here and control them both the same. Now I have a third little box here up in the air, this gray box. And this guy's actually got his own timeline. He's not using any of the master timelines. He's got his own little timeline. He's got a local clock. He's got a time scale of... I don't know why he's using that. Uh, but I could, I could take his scale, his local scale, and I could move his local scale around. And he's all by himself. And I can do that with all these happening. Doing their own thing. Right? At the same time, I can be running around with this player. And be doing stuff with those. 
And one, one of the other kind of cool things is these guys are all doing their gravity thing and their rewind thing. And if I could take my player, my little fake player here, and I could zip over there like it's nothing. And I could do my little time shield underneath them and affect them as well. Right? Like if I sit over here, we ram these guys up. I can turn my thing on. See how they all they were slowing there? Now let's just do them globally. Right? See, like they're, they're even going backwards at a slower pace with that on. But yeah, so it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah. So, <coughs> on, on, that, on that shield, if I pull a shield out, it's scaled down because it zooms in. But there's my shield. I also made that shader. I'm so proud of myself. I'm, I'm not a shader guy at all. But he has a area clock 3D, which uses a trigger. And you can use any mesh you want. Just just, just keep in mind that anything that, that needs to affect the things in this time, have to like, they have to follow the same laws of triggers. So it needs a rigid body to hit this trigger. Now, with this, the area clock, <coughs> You can do, well, I mean, we can just pause things, flat out pause things. But you can say instant, just flat out stop this thing, or you could do different versions. So right, right now I'm doing a, actually let's go, into, let's go into play mode real quick. So if I create a sphere, we have this kind of cool effect. So now, uh, if you can think of kind of a distance of how far... How far of a scale this guy, this thing is going to look at, right? Like for example, we go with a smaller scale, you know, and they they slow down, and it's cool. And if I go too small, <clears throat> you kind of get this weird behavior that's really crappy. Um, see if I can still get it with that. Yeah, so I mean, I can still get it with the 0.17 on this for the for that speed, anyways. But if I take this and ram this up, that might be too far. All right, it's it's a much more gradual um, drop into here because it's it's a much larger scale. But at the same time, it makes it look cooler. I think, anyways. And I'm like, I'm pretty much like the master judge of what's cool. At least that's what I think. And I mean, screw it. So, there's that. Now, looking at this, let's say, uh, th think of this as we enter, we enter and we're at this percent of our scale. Here we're at full scale as we come in through. So if we go up like this, and we go like this. We would expect, um, not that that's perfect, but whatever, um, that it's going to come in. It has a slight slowdown. This is a pretty small slope, and well, it's a steep slope, but distance-wise, pretty small. And then it should be like full scale, right? So if I hit it now, it's, I guess, just about instant. Right, so that's kind of that's that's what this guy is. And if I, oh my god, you can do some weird, wacky shit with that. All right, where he has something like this, you could have a more of a. It's a much slower than also sort of ramped up. Even though I am kind of curious on doing something like this now, just literally out of shits and giggles. That wasn't nearly as cool as I thought it was going to be. But anyways, that's kind of how this whole thing works. And it, it can really give you some really neat effects. So you only really need a couple things, right? Like 
if I wanted to make a new thing, I could literally just create a box. There's a cube. And I could say, all right, you have physics and you need a timeline. There you go. Now we could do local like I did over here, or I can say, you know what, you're gonna run off of one of your one of our global times, and I'll show you those in a minute. And we need a global clock to choose from. Right? So we can say I'm only gonna run off of just in both colors. And the recording duration and all that fun stuff. Um, so like I said, I mean now just just with adding that. It's really all I had to do, right? I tell them which timeline to use, and I add a timeline component. Pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But keep in mind, if you had children, um, that you also want to scale down, such as you know particle effects and stuff. You'd have to put that the child component on there too. But yeah, see now he is rewindable, and I can adjust his time like it's nothing. So what are the timelines? Good question me, or well, however that may work. If I go game object timekeeper, now it says I've already got one, because you can only have one, um, but it's one of these. I, I'm going to delete it and we'll remake it. But So I delete it, so we have nothing, right? So if we were going to set this thing up from the start, we would go, okay, we have timekeeper, we create them, we now have this. Right, so now we have a clock called root, and we have a parent. So I could say this is the master time. Right, there we go, he's master time. And then I could turn around and say these guys, or well, you know, let's, let's take all these cubes. Oh, I can't multi edit. Um, this now says missing, but now we have master in here, so he's off of the master time. So if I adjust this scale, anything using master time will adjust. Now the coolest thing about this is I can add more clocks. I can add, I just type in clock. We want another global clock. And we can make another one, and another one, and another one. And they all kind of stack. So this one I could say is our blue. And its parent is the master. Well now, I can turn around and go to this block, whichever one I had, I don't even know anymore, but whatever. This guy will say, and I can say, you, you know what, you're gonna go with blue. But So now, if I adjust blue, his time scale changes. But if I also adjust global clock of the master, his time will change as well. Because they are, and, and you, can, you can make these additive or whatever you wanna do, you can adjust that as well. But it's kind of a cool way that you, that you can stack these things, right? So you, you can make you can you can more or less make groups, and then you make almost a little tree out of them, right? Like I can make another clock, and we can call this, um, you know, all goblins, right? And then if you had, and we could parent him to the the master or we can parent him to the blue and then he'll parent to the master and then now this guy's affected by all of the times right so you, you you can you can really stack things up and you can make all this different stuff so if you want to do a pause game you could pause him and it pauses everything right down because he's the, he's the root right so that's, that's it's pretty cool right and like i said i mean if you have children like, like these things do uh, it, all they need is that timeline and that say, hey, which which one am I using here? Right? And then you can say, is it rewindable or not? Uh, there is some limitations with that. Like if you have, especially things like particles, it doesn't like uh, various randomness on the particles. Like it, it, it can do a lot. Like you can see like those ones here that were running were pretty good. Um... But anyways, so for every child, you just you just need that timeline child, and it brings it into this this object, so they all work as one, right? So you got to keep that in mind. Uh, but that's literally all you need. Now there are actions. All right, let's take a look at these actions, shall we? So <clears throat> there's just some basic information here. Uh, just get the info. Uh, we have a flat out pause a clock. 
Um, uh, release time. We can scale a clock, right? So uh, you could, you know, you can set the scale. I I, I like to use these. Uh, well, I already got that thing open with like a float interplate. Right, uh, I, I'm going to scale, you know, from one to zero. Stored as something, and set it to something every frame, and then now it'll go from one to zero over one second. That's that's typically how I do those type of things, but whatever. Um, we also have. Uh, scale time smoothly so why well, is more or less the same thing but kind of in a combined way uh, I can probably even show you one of those here in one second schedule we can fire off an event at a certain time during it, uh, timeline states, which actually, actually I thought this one was kind of neat, is you could you could put a you can put this action on so that you'll get whatever events during, you know, okay, we've hit normal time, we've hit slow time, you know, we are paused and you know we're going in reverse. So it's just a way to kind of control how things are kind of going, I suppose. So if I go to How's our timekeeper? There he is. There's our damn timekeeper. Oh, right, so we have okay, all goblins. We'll scale that one. So let's scale him to zero over ten seconds. We'll put him as we'll tell him to go steady. Steady as she goes. And anytime now. Anytime. Hurry up. Go. Now. Now. Aha. See, and you see. Now that things are picking up, it's actually scaling it down over that time. And there you go. Everything just kind of works. It picks up on animators physics particles audio uh like everything so cool